start. Okay, excellent. I have to say continue, don't I? Uh, yes. Okay, excellent. Um, so, hi, I'm Donald. I'm a PhD student at Chemistry in Loughborough, uh, but I'm affiliated to Birmingham through the CDT for fuel cells and their fuels. Um, so, first I'd like to start off and define public engagement. So, this is something I've taken from the National Coordinating Centre for Public Engagement. So, it, public engagement describes the myriad of ways in which activities and benefits of higher education and research can be uh, shown to the public. Definition, uh, engagement by definition is a two-way process which involves listening uh, interaction with the goal of a mutual benefit. So that's quite wordy, so I thought I'd put it into a nice picture for us. Um, so it's an individual with specialist knowledge and a two-way interaction between uh, an individual or individuals with no particular knowledge to deliver the consequent benefit. So um, then let's define SMART criteria. So we have specific of what we'll do, how we're evaluate in measurable, achievable, we have a realistic goal, uh, relevant of achieving worth something worthwhile, and then the deadline of being time-based. So what is my activity idea? So the idea was to create a guest lectureship series at the local college with extended Q&A to develop um, understanding. So this requires uh, collaboration between myself and somebody at the college. So quite luckily, we had somebody in the chemistry department that was a lecturer at the college. So I could um, talk to him and liaise with him to build the lecture series, and then it would require other speakers. So you'll notice as well in the top left over here, uh, we have S and A. So I'm sort of trying to, uh, with each set of these planning, um, match our criteria to what we want to do. So. So now we've defined the idea, we have, we'll go back to this picture and say that the individual is going to be a, a PhD or postdoc, uh, that's the specialist knowledge, and then the non-particular uh, knowledge is going to be the sixth form students. So we have the speaker and the audience. So we have the guest lectures as one way, and then we'll have the extended Q&A to um, develop their understanding and talk to us even more, which will turn into the consequent benefit. And the question is, what is the consequent benefit? So I've written a list here. So some of them are particular to the students, like trying to increase their understanding of chemistry, showing links between the A-level course and active research. So for this one, uh, I made sure that the um, speakers were given the A-level syllabus, and I really wanted them to apply the A-level syllabus to what they were doing to show that what we're actually doing still applies to the work they're learning about. Uh, we wanted to help inform the university decisions. So um, the speakers were told to introduce themselves, their background and what projects they were supervising for master's students. So they knew, oh, this is what we're doing in the future um, if we did an undergraduate degree. And we wanted to, so this is more towards the speakers now, helping inspire, showing that, you know, a few meters down the road, there's all this research that's going on. Uh, practice for presentations, so if they did conferences, and then being able to, that skill to break down these complex topics into somebody with not that particular knowledge. So now if we talk about measuring the event benefit, so this is including the M and the measurable, uh, so evaluations were taken place or through surveys and review questions of the students and the presenters. So I've said questions to match the success criteria, which we can say is what we mentioned before, the consequent benefit, what we think the consequent benefit is going to be. And then we also asked, what are the potential improvements for this? So now we've built a final plan. So we have the speaker, the audience, the two-way interaction, and the consequent benefit. For the time, we decided with John that these would be conducted weekly uh, during the lunch times at the college, and then we'd get an idea on numbers through a sign-up in the college portal. Then, through the consequent benefit, we could uh, analyze this and evaluate this through the speakers and the audience through our surveys and questions and then hopefully we could take that and build for in um, improvement in future events. So here's my list of speakers so there was quite a few of us speaking so it took place over a number of weeks and what I really wanted to do was try and get something from the breadth of chemistry and really not focus on one area so we had mine which was um, 
catalysis and hydrogen, sort of inorganic, working with metals. We had forensic chemistry, somebody working on the chemistry of fingerprints, uh, organic chemistry, flow chemistry, radio chemistry to treat diseases, uh, and even robotics and 3D printing, which is something that we're also doing at the university. So I really wanted to try and make sure that it wasn't just one area that we were focusing on and we could all apply it to the elephant course. So if we look actually at my presentation, so as I said, I was focused on hydrogen and catalysis, which is where my active research is. The talks were planned to be 20 to 25 minutes with a 10 to 15 minute Q&A. So, um, as I said, we were including the A-level syllabus alongside further explanations to really try and push their knowledge. So if you look at the top picture on the left, this Maxwell-Boltzmann curve is taken directly from the uh, A-level course. And I can explain to them, this is, yes, how we can show a catalyst, but it's also shown in this other way. And then fuel cells as well. So fuel cells are um, also in the course and... Um, they're obviously what main use of hydrogen will be. So I was trying to also show different ways for a sustainable future. Uh, and then I also included who I was super helping supervise in my MCHEM projects. So they were developing uh, catalysts and they were developing reaction design for renewable hydrogen production. So um, these undergrad students were actually doing this new research and I want to show this is what you can do. And then also, Rather than me just talking at them for 20 minutes, I wanted to ask them questions. So during the presentation, I had um, moments where I would stop and ask them the question that was on the screen. And then we talk about that for a couple of minutes and then continue with the presentation. So then we evaluated it through survey. So there was um, uh, quite a few questions and also the improvement question. Uh, and then we got these, um, I sort of collated the feedback and then Put them into these pie charts here so we could really see if we'd done what we were wanting to do. So I could understand what the speakers were talking about. We got some very positive um, review here. So it's good the um, PhD students and the postdocs were able to break down what they were saying and make it understandable to the A-level students. Um, this was another one we wanted them to think uh, about university and what they were wanting to do at university and again um, that was extremely positively reviewed. Uh, and the extended question and answer session, they think it was um, a high agree and strongly agree. There was no one sure in that, that the speakers were able to break down their questions and understand them. And then we had some more questions. So the students felt very engaged during the talks. Uh, this was also good, a bit of unsure, um, but we'll discuss that in a bit. Um, and they could see that they were related. So as I said, I, I made sure that we were looking at the A-level syllabus to really um, sort of touch base on where we were going to go with it. And then uh, this one is a much more mixed picture. Uh, so it made my classes more real and fun. So um, despite them being able to see the difference, they weren't necessarily saying that the lessons were any better because of it. But they were happy to see that um, this research that was going on. So uh, if I look at the student evaluation, uh, and we asked what could be improved. So this was, this was I thought was a really good one, is the speakers could show us how they actually approach their research and what it is to carry it out as a scientist. Um, opportunities provided what they could do after the talks, uh, more students, so attendance was a thing, and this, this could be you know, further advertisement in the future, and then more interactive and activities to do. So this came up a, um, a couple of times, uh, and I think, this was, you know, because of the standard format of the talks, but because something had not been done at the college like this before, that we thought we'd stick to a more traditional approach. And then uh, if we did future events, then we could change it a bit more. So then if I look at the sort of guest lecturer feedback, um, I hoped that they got the guidance that they wanted to um, uh, academic level because I was the one telling them about it. And I strongly agree, which was great. Um, they felt the students understood the content, um, content being taught because they were um, asking questions and uh, probing their knowledge. And then 100% strongly agree that uh, they would recommend to others to do a talk at the college, which is great because we want to do it again in the future. So this was also asked then, what could be improved to the guest lecturers? So more advertising to increase student participation. So I, I don't know if I mentioned, I had 
we had about 15 to 20 for each talk. And obviously, um, this could be more uh, improved a lot more uh, with more um, advertising in the college. So then uh, potential for more activity-based learning slash increased interaction. And um, this again came up, display or props uh, involved them a bit more. So, so again, this is, if we ran future events, we would definitely bring in like a Molly Mod kit and get them to build structures and things. Um, but because it was the first, we thought uh, we'd stick to a more traditional approach. So future plans, um, I was speaking to John and he was saying other colleagues in other departments have come to him and said he wa they want to get speakers in their areas to come in. Uh, we've got potential for more talk. So when I, I spoke to him last week and he was saying um, they'd love to run some more in the spring term. And then he also mentioned that he'd found a Royal Society grant to fund small research projects in the university uh, within the college. So if PhD students were interested in that, we could also have a look at doing that as well. Um, and then finally, uh, I think we successfully um, delivered the guest lecture series with the defined SMART criteria and planning. Uh, I liaised with the college to build links in the chemistry department between ours and uh, their chemistry department. And I think that our, um, oh, uh, I got plenty of PhD students involved and I'm sure I could get plenty more. Um, and then there is potential there for further activities or research uh, with different PhD students because I have spoken to others to try and get us to um, do more of these events. Thank you very much. Perfect. Good timing. 11 and a half minutes. So you didn't even need your warning. Um, so Lauren, a really interesting project. Um, Lauren, have you yeah. got any immediate questions? Um, I've got a couple here, yeah, but I just thought, first yeah. of all, I thought that was really, really interesting. Well done. It's, um, it's obviously a very well planned and executed um, project. Um, and also, you, on one of your slides, you mentioned about, uh, you asked them whether they thought it was fun or whatever. I can't remember the exact question. And you said, oh, well, not all of them did, but 88% said it was agreed or strongly agreed, which is amazing. 88% is really great. So um, I think that's a really positive, uh, positive sign. Um, question. So obviously, you targeted uh, sixth formers for yep. this project lecture series. I just wondered whether, um, given some, maybe some of the evaluation that you have done and some of the feedback, whether you might think about possibly doing, or what, 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 your, what your thoughts on possibly doing something similar, but with a different age demographic at a school, so maybe younger students um, to get uh, them earlier in their, in their career, their, their career making decisions? Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, uh, I, I sort of, when I was looking for a place to go, I was looking at different um, sort of schools that I could go into. And the A-level one sort of was, was the main one because then we could sort of pitch it along the syllabus. So then we'd have like a clearly defined thing. But if we could do it, it with other schools, um, I'm sure people would enjoy doing that. Because there's a challenge, because I guess with the you know, the sixth form syllabus, there's the, um, a stronger links, aren't they, with the mm -hmm. research that you're doing? So it's yeah. just that it's just whether you think that actually um, it, it would be difficult to adjust um, your kind of presentation and the presentation of the PhD students to kind of scale down the content to match the syllabus at a, a long, younger level. It's it's, a, it's an interesting um, uh, it, it's a it's a skill I think to be able to do that. So um, it's maybe something for the future. Yeah, I think, you know, uh, the younger go, we go, definitely the more activities based it would have to be. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a really interesting point because there's a there's always a, a kind of ever circulating set of discussions around if you target at kind of a level, there's some evidence to show well those students might have already chosen, it's not going to have the bigger impact. Mm -hmm. But if you then go younger or to a wider uh, demographic of students that don't necessarily identify as interested in science or um, that you might have a bigger impact but to get to those you have to change the type of information that you include and the, and the links to the research so I think that's it it's a huge area of discussion in public engagement um, I was just going to ask on, on that um, point that you brought us to about activities um, have you got any ideas about what sort of activities, hands-on things you can do? And 
you mentioned sort of molly mod kits and things like that but i wondered if you thought about any kind of um creative activities or anything that's that's a bit bit kind of out of the box uh yes so um i went to a, a conference actually uh, last year and we built a six foot um zeolite arch out of molly mod and then supported it on the frame but um, so that's just a mix of oxygen, silicon, and alumina in different shapes. And then they build two same structures. And then depending where they bind, they make all different cages and structures. So um, giving them a base, oh, you could build this one and this one, and then see how they build it, then you could build the microporous structure of a zeolite. So you could, uh, and, and it, just depending on where it attaches, it could be a completely different structure and do a completely different thing. I think that's that, that's some, especially in my research because I work a lot with materials that you can do a lot of building materials and building together because they are just repeating units but stacked in different ways and then they will have a completely different purpose. And that's it. Do you think you could do it with things sort of other than the very literal version of kind of a mo molly mod? Could you do it with other things? You know, like with with food items or craft items. I, I mean, definitely. I mean. Uh, I've played with uh, just doing it with polystyrene balls before and gluing them together. <laughs> you know? um, all sorts of things like that. I mean, especially the people that did um, sort of more organic-y things, they, they've, they've got a lot more room to play with, with sort of food and such like. Cool. Um, and I was going to ask you as well, with your evaluation, um, did you pull out any information on what the students might have picked up in relation to specifically the research? Were there any sort of written comments or anything like that where you could see, oh, actually the research content itself is what they've responded to? Uh, yes, so we also, so there was, uh, there was a lot more questions that I didn't yeah. uh, sort of, so we also had, um, you know, we had three things that you tell us what you liked about the talks, what you thought was interesting, uh, and a lot of people said they gave insight into the uni, showed us how science works in the real world. Um, well, so I've got them all up here. Um, how seeing different career paths, um, enjoyed low carbon technologies and what's being used to combat global warming. Um, uh, yeah, insight, real life applications. And did you get any feeling for how many of the students picked up on, on research aspects, any kind of quantitative-ish um, data from that sort of, was it the majority of students that, was, that were saying that they in, enjoyed something that's specifically linked to the research? Um, was it a minority? Was it a real, was it a mixed bag? Um, yeah, I think I had a, another question about this. So um, I, we had one that said talks motivated to think about research. And that again was, um, there, there was a few unsures, but it was, you know, over 50% agree or strongly agree. Uh, and uh, we also had the, uh, we also asked the question about doing some research and collaboration with the university. Uh, so people were, uh, there was a few agrees, but that one was a lot more mixed because mm -hmm. uh, I suppose it's something completely different to just going to a talk. And they might not, might not automatically have a clear idea of what that that participation might mean which was that question on improvement yeah. you know because maybe it would be good to give them an insight into what we actually do um, day to day rather than the overall picture absolutely i think that those human stories can really bring it alive when some when you tell somebody i i'm I use this machine in a room all day and i just put and i put invisible things in and get all these numbers out and and people might be a bit bamboozled but once they kind of get a view of what that actually looks like and what that might feel like even if it seems really abstract i think sometimes it brings it bring it brings it to life for audiences oh, definitely. i mean I, I demonstrate in the undergraduate labs and you can sort of see when they're looking at the words like i don't understand any of this and then you talk them through the instrument and then they're suddenly like, oh yeah yeah lauren did you have any other questions yeah, I was just going to ask, so obviously you did one of the lectures yourself as well, didn't you? And I just wondered, um, did the, any of the questions that the students asked during the extending question and um, answer session um, give you any more different perspectives on your research? Or did you learn anything about um, your own presentation style by taking part in it? Um, yeah, um, so they, 
I mean, they asked uh, a lot on, you know, how, where they think hydrogen will place in sort of the future rather than sort of technical, more technical questions. So it was a lot more like, how is this going to stop global warming rather than, you know, uh, what does this metal do? Yeah. But, um, so it sort of gives you a place because I mean, I, I was telling them that, um, so the main method for making hydrogen is methane steam reforming and that's not great. So I was sort of telling them, this is not good, hydrogen's not good. But then saying, actually we can do it another way. Um, so it, it sort of, I, I wanted them to think about the ideas of what they were, uh, what is actually green because people market things as green and it's not necessarily. Right. Yeah, I think that's really good too. It's that uh, building up that critical thinking yeah. as well into it. It's really nice to see. Okay, I think we can probably let you off the hook now. <laughs> <laughs> Been kindly ask, answering all our questions. That's um, perfectly fine. So, as I said, we'll be I'll be uploading all of these. So. Um, uh, that's so that the assessors can mark them, but also because we try and make some of this process um, open and, and public as well, because uh, mm -hmm. we want to make sure that we can celebrate the work you've done and, and make get the maximum visibility for it. And um, so I'll let you know about that. And then, as I said, I'll probably contact you to say, um, can we have another few minutes um, just to answer any other questions that come out of the assessment? No problem. Yeah. Lovely. Well, thank you ever so much. You did really well. Thank Good you very to see much. you. Nice to meet you. Yes, nice to meet you too. Have a good day. Thanks. Take care. Bye-bye.